Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. SQL and Hadoop are two rapidly growing environments in most data centers today, and protecting those has become a, kind of an issue of some debate. And so joining me on the board to discuss that is Jay Desai. Uh, he is with Amanis Data. Jay, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. So um, before we get too far into this, tell us a little bit about Amanis Data, what you guys do. So Amanis Data does enterprise data management okay. for distributed database bases such as NoSQL and Hadoop. Well, then you're the right guy to talk to. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, one of the challenges, my concern here is I hear a lot is, well, I don't need to back up these NoSQL or Hadoop because they, you know, they have replicas. What's what's the flaw in that, that logic? That's a great question, and that's a common myth as well, mm -hmm. is I have three replicas of my data. Why do I need to do any backups? Right. What three replicas do is they protect you against hardware failures. So okay. if you have a drive go bad or if you have an entire node, so what you're looking at is a three-node NoSQL database, as right. an example, three replicas in pink. If any of those nodes go down, you still have two replicas. If two nodes go down, you have one replica. Right. But if a user makes a mistake, mm -hmm. if ransomware corrupts one of those f uh, files, mm -hmm. all three will get corrupted almost instantly concurrently yeah okay right? so that's you don't really have any protection mechanism with three replicas except for hardware failure and so that it's that lack of a point in time type of functionality I exactly guess. okay yep. so uh, then I, i'm assuming this is something that you guys do you want to talk a little bit more detail about what you guys do there so i manage data does enterprise data management what do we mean by that we need th we mean three things data protection Right, so this is what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. How do I protect from different types of failures, including site failure? Okay. So that encompasses disaster recovery. Okay. Second is data orchestration. And what does that mean? That's basically data mobility. How do I move data around? Could be for test dev purposes, could be for cloud migration, okay. could be for long-term archival. Okay. And then the third thing we do is a lot of automation. Right, so in these big data environments, you end up with human beings making decisions. Sure. You can't afford to do that when data volumes are in the petabytes. Right. How do you meet an RPO? What's your schedule for backup? That automation needs to come from machines, not gotcha. from humans. Okay, and so you guys do all that. Now, I, 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 one of the challenges I would assume with a NoSQL environment is it's an eventually consistent world. How do you perform something like data protection in that environment? That's the hard part, right? It is. It is. So there's actually three things that are really hard. Okay. First is the data volumes. Okay. Right, so now you're talking about dealing with not gigabytes of data, tens and hundreds of terabytes, and potentially petabytes. Okay. Right, and that poses its own challenge. A single server cannot scale to that level. You really need a scale-out architecture. Gotcha. Right. The, so um, and so then, the data protection solution itself has to scale out. Has to scale out. Gotcha. And the whole paradigm of in periodic folds and and uh, incrementals doesn't work. Right. Right. Imagine backing up a petabyte every week. You can't do that. No, That's not no, practical. No. So you need a different approach to that as well. Okay. Right. The second is the distributed aspect of these databases. Right. So this is not a single node. It could be thousands of nodes. Right. So putting agents on each of these doesn't work well. Yeah. Right. So you really have to have some kind of an agentless architecture to do that. Okay. Uh, you have to manage these different nodes. If you have thousand nodes, there's likelihood of those nodes failing. Right. How do you protect? How do you manage? How do you back up that data while nodes are failing? While new nodes are being added, nodes are being decommissioned. That's the dynamic nature of the distributed databases that you have to maintain. Okay. And then the redundancy, like you talked about, right? How do I ensure that if I have three replicas, how do I back up all three replicas or do I back up one? Mm -hmm. Are they all consistent or all, all different? Right. How do I dedupe all that data? Yeah. How do I handle inconsistencies with that data? So those pose huge challenges, and we've obviously uh, uh, designed that to take care of those scenarios. So what I'm hearing here is scale, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then the the concept of you can't you almost need like an eight not almost you need an agentless environment, yeah. right? And then dealing with this uh, lack of consistency, and and I you know I'm assuming you guys have solved all those. So why don't you talk a little bit about how you did that? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how we uh, approach this. So again, okay. our advantage is we started from the ground up with these problems in mind. Right, you're not so involving we, a legacy not, backup, right? We're not install, yeah, exactly, we're not yeah. starting from that legacy, we're starting from scratch. Gotcha. So we know we have to scale, right? So scalability, and this is petabytes. Right. We've designed for petabytes. What do I mean by that? So we've taken a lot of the concepts around Hadoop, mm -hmm. 
Okay. And as you know, Hadoop has been proven to scale to thousands or tens of thousands of nodes. So we've sure. taken some of those principles and built it into our software. Okay. So you can start small, you can start with three nodes, and you can scale up. Okay. We, what we also do is everything is done in parallel. So if, I'm, if I were to doing a back, doing a backup with a single media server, uh, you're not going to scale that way. Right. So if, if the Imanis data cluster is a 50-node cluster, all 50 nodes are being used to do a backup or to do a recovery or to do deduplication. Gotcha. Okay. Right? So that's, that's the other aspect of uh, scale out, right? right. So, so massively scale parallel. Out, ma massively distributed, and then we have a distributed file system okay. that makes all the storage that's allocated for backup look like a single unit. Okay. And then we, on top of that, we apply a deduplication uh, to provide like 10x uh, reduction so in backup storage. Reduce the cost of storing the data. Yeah. The second uh, aspect of it is that we are data aware. Right. So for each of these databases, they have their own nuances. Okay. And we have connectors for every database that I talked about, NoSQL database, Hadoop database. And without using agents, using native APIs in those platforms, we're able to connect to them and understand the nuances of each database. Oh, okay. The intelligence is in those connectors. Uh, which understands the format of the files, it understands the schema, and which is different for every database. And, and, and the advantages of that are? So for, for example, let's say I want to recover a single table okay. or a single uh, key space. Yeah. Right? I can do that without being data aware. Also, it helps with consistency of backup. Every database has a different way of being consistent. So gotcha. when you're doing a backup, what you're backing up with Cassandra versus MongoDB versus Hive is going to be different and different mechanisms are used by each of these databases to ensure consistency. Gotcha, okay. So that's critical, because when you want to restore sure. it, you want it back in the same well, state. Well, and you got to be granular like that, because again, you don't want to have to restore a petabyte if you don't have to, right? That's right, yeah. that's right. Okay. So data aware obviously understands the schema, understands the format, right? Right. So these three replicas we talked about, they might be slightly different. How do you deduplicate that? Standard right. block level deduplication won't work. Right. So we are data aware, we look at the content and, and do uh, deduplication based on that. And then we also do something called masking. Okay. Right. So if you have PII data in your production environment, while you're making a copy for test purposes, you don't want PII data showing up. Right. Right. So we mask that data prior to copying it. So for that also, you have to be data aware. Gotcha. Okay. And the third most important thing is we have incorporated machine learning. Right. So we actually have machine learning in our software. Okay. And the whole idea is that as data scales, how do you make decisions for the humans, uh, operators, versus uh, using machine learning? Okay. So the first iteration of that is something called ThreatSense. Okay. Right? So the, using ThreatSense, we can detect anomalies. So if you have a backup and you, you see anomalies in the backup, which could be a ransomware encrypting a lot of data, sure. it could be some user deleting data intentionally or accidentally, we'll catch it using our machine learning algorithm and warn the user so that they can recover to the closest point in time and reduce data loss. And, and, and I would, I think that's an important point. These environments are just as susceptible to something like a ransomware as any other environment. Absolutely, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that machine learning allows you to detect those sort of things happening. All right, well, Jay, thanks very much. I, I think that's really important that people understand that these environments need to be protected and they need to be managed. And the default, the default architectures really do a good job, right? Absolutely, but yeah. adding these in really gives you know, the sort of the enterprise class capabilities that these environments need, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right, great. Well, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.